Hello, everyone. Welcome to session two. Thanks for joining us. I'm just going to wait a couple of seconds here to let uh, everybody else log in before we get started. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for session two of our April Challenger. It's great to see so many of you come back. <laughs> so obviously, it didn't scare you off, which is great. And um, I know we have some new folks today joining us as well. So for people who are new, my name is Shelley. I'm a neurophysiotherapist, and I'm also a staff member at Parkinson Society BC. Uh, and for those who are not new today, but don't recognize me in my glasses, I'm Shelly. <laughs> um, so today is session two of our April Challenger. Um, it's gone by pretty quick because it's already session two. We've only got two sessions left. So as the name implies, the April Challenger is a, uh, a high, slightly higher intensity class than our other classes. And um, it is mostly for targeting those in standing. Um, I know from last time there wasn't anybody who was actually seated in the class. So I think today I'm going to um, not do the seated versions. Uh, I do have a chair there just in case, but I think given that it is the April Challenger and I do want to challenge everybody's balance, it would be probably a good idea um, to stick to the standing version. So I will do that today unless anybody wants the seated version, then I can add that in. But if not, I will stick to the standing version. And uh, for people who are new, you will probably see a chat box that has opened up, um, which should be on your right side of the screen. The chat box is where you're going to communicate with me because uh, you don't actually have microphones on on your end, because otherwise you can imagine with everybody microphones on, it would be pretty hard to hear anything. So if you have any questions or want to chat to me about anything, feel free to type it in the chat box. If you don't see the chat box, it might be uh, collapsed, which means it might be in an icon that's a blue circle, and it'll just say chat box. If you click on it, it should open up. And you will see at the very top of the chat box, I put in our email address, which is info at parkingsin.bc.ca. If you do want to email us with any questions or suggestions for the future, please let us know, and you can email us through that. Today's class uh, is going to build slightly on the class that we did last time. And um, all the sessions are recorded. So session one is already up on our YouTube page. If you're not sure where that is, feel free to drop us an email and we can send you that YouTube link. And uh, today's class will be uploaded by next week. So probably by next Thursday. Okay, so last time we talked about having some uh, a little bit of equipment with us today. So just to remind you, we've got a little cushion that looks like this. So for people who have done my um, hand and dexterity webinars, same small cushion, or it could be bigger, it doesn't matter, but some kind of a cushion you can use. And I've also got two towels with me today. You can see they're uh, kitchen towels or tea towels um, or some kind of a fabric, maybe some scarves, something like that, something lightweight that you can use today to help us with our exercise class. Um, I think I see someone typing in the chat box. No, nope. okay, that was just me thinking someone typed in the chat box. Okay, so we're gonna get started. I'm going to pull up my clock here, just so I can see while I am doing the exercises with you. Hopefully you can see and hear me okay. I'm going to move back. Okay, so, we're gonna start in standing as always, and we're going to start by marching on the spot. So you're gonna lift those knees up nice and high, swinging those arms as you're marching. Now, just a reminder, if anything in the class today feels a little too fast for you, that's okay, don't worry, feel free to slow it down. But of course, you do want to challenge yourself a little bit. So if you can, speed it up, a bit, great, but if you feel like you're really losing the technique of your movement as you're moving faster, then I'd rather you go a little bit slower just so you can get the technique of the exercises. 
Right, so we're marching. And you can probably see here that my arms are swinging. If I turn to the side to show you, you can see that my arms are not just swinging forward, but they are also swinging backward. Can you see that? So really make sure that when you are marching on the spot, we're not just bringing the arms forward, but you wanna swing them back as well. So you get nice movement in every direction. Lift those knees up a little bit higher if you can. Now we're gonna keep the same marching pattern. We're just going to travel it sideways. So we're doing exactly the same marching pattern, just traveling it sideways across the room like so. Trying to keep those knees up nice and high if you can, swinging those arms and traveling sideways. Check in with yourself every now and then to make sure that we are still swinging the arms forward and back, not just forward. <laughs> and we're just sidestepping across the room with the same marching pattern. Good. Let's do one more round of this. So one more time to the right and to the left across the room. Trying to lift those knees up nice and high. Good. And we're gonna come back to the center. Okay, great. So we're gonna keep the legs going. We're gonna bring the arms out into a T shape now. So our legs are gonna keep marching, but our arms are gonna be out like so. And what we're gonna do here is we're going to bring the knee to the hand. Knee to the opposite hand, like so. So you'll notice I said knee to hand and not hand to knee because what I don't want to see is this. I don't want to see us start bending down and trying to bring our hand to the knee. I want you to lift the knees up nice and high to meet the hand instead. Chest up. Good. So remember, if anything feels too fast, don't feel like you have to match my speed. You do a speed that works for you, but still challenges you, right? So we don't want it to be so slow. That is too easy. Good. This time, we're going to bring our knee to the forearm. So you gotta twist a little bit further in order to get the knee to the forearm, making sure you're returning your arms to the T shape after each step. Good. You notice a little bit of balance coming in here. Nice and simple. Bring that knee up towards your forearms. Good. Now, we're going to bring our knee to our elbow. So knee to the opposite elbow this time. We got to twist a little bit further. Now, if you can't bring the knee to the elbow, that's okay, no worries. Just go as far as you can, twisting as far as you can in each direction. Last six, five, four, three, two, one, and rest. This time we're going to tap those heels forward while we push our arms forward, spreading those fingers nice and wide. So I'm just tapping those heels forward here, one at a time. So we're shifting our weight from one leg to the other as we're tapping the foot forward. Really reach those arms forward like you're pushing something away from you, spreading those fingers nice and wide. Good, well done everyone, keep it going. Let's do eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one. And we're going to tap the toes to the side as we open those arms nice and wide, opening the chest, squeezing those shoulder blades together as you open those arms. Noticing here, as I'm tapping out to the side, I'm not stepping on the leg, right? So I'm not stepping. I'm keeping my weight in the middle and I'm 
tapping those toes out to the side. So you're shifting your weight slightly, but you're keeping everything relatively balanced in the middle. Elbows up high if you can. <laughs> Last eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and drop the arms. Legs relatively close together. We're going to squat down, send our hips back behind us, reach your arms forward. So from the side, it looks like this, almost like you're about to sit in a chair. And then we're going to stand back up, step out to the side into our wide squat. Same thing, stick your bottom back, almost like you're about to sit in a chair, reach those arms out and bring that leg back to the middle. Same thing, narrow squat, bending those knees, sinking that bottom back, reaching the fingers forward. Stand back up. Other leg is going to step out to the side. Squatting down, reach the arms out to the side. And then come back in. So we're doing a narrow squat. Back up. Step out to the side into a wide squat. Arms out. And back in. Again, narrow squat. Step out with the other leg. Wide squat. So a bit of weight shifting coming in here, a bit of stepping, narrow squats, and wide squat. See if you can wiggle your fingers. Every, every time you come down into a squat, can you wiggle those fingers to make sure we're not closing our hands? Good. And again, narrow squat. Wiggle those fingers. Make sure they're not tight in a fist. Good, and again, narrow squat, and wide squat. Good, one more each side, narrow squat, wide squat. Stick your bottom back as if you're about to sit in a chair. Last time, narrow squat, step out into a wide squat, and come back up. Okay, legs nice and wide, reach those arms out into a T-shape. We're going to bend down sideways like so. So you're reaching one arm toward the floor and the other one up at the ceiling. And you should feel a nice stretch on the side of your body, making sure your chest is facing forward. So we don't want the chest to do this. We want it to be forward. So you really get that nice stretch on the side. And we're going to come back up. Same thing, other side. Tipping down, reaching one arm to the floor and the other one up at the ceiling, chest facing forward, stretch the side of your body, and come back up. This time, we're going to bring our arms, we're going to wrap them around our body, so you take the opposite hand to the hip, so hip and opposite hand, hip to opposite hand behind you, so you're twisting your body around like a corkscrew to rotate that spine, rotate your back, holding it here. Nice and tall. And then we're gonna open the arms back up to a T. Same thing, other direction, rotating across. Think hand to the opposite hip, like a corkscrew. Nice and tall, crown of the head is still reaching for the ceiling, even when we're twisted. And we're gonna come back up to the middle and drop those arms. Okay, so exercises today, we are doing five exercises like last time, two minutes for each exercise, and then we're gonna run through them twice, and then you have your cool down, and that's it. So hopefully, not too scary. <laughs> so the first one, we're going to grab our pillow or our cushion. So I want you to grab that and hold it in your hands. Now, the first exercise we're doing is a multi-directional lunge movement. So here's what it looks like. You're going to step forward or lunge forward. So let me go to the side so you can see. When you are lunging, you're thinking of almost like you're sending that back knee to the floor, almost like you're about to kneel on the floor, but not quite, okay? So that's the lunge. If you can't do the lunge, don't worry. Step out as far as you can. Okay, so either lunge, drop the back knee towards the floor, hovering off the floor, or step, a, a step out as far as you can. Okay, so holding onto the pillow, here's what we're going to do. 
starting with one of your legs you're going to step or lunge forward th keep this position you're going to throw the cushion up in the air and catch it whoop, without losing your balance then step back in same thing to the side step to the side as far as you can bring the pillow around your torso without doing this so we want to keep our chest up bring it around the torso step back in i'm going to just move forward a little bit same thing same leg going backwards this time step or lunge backwards and you're going to take the cushion again throw in the air and catch and then step back in and then we do the same thing on the other side so the other leg is going to step or lunge forward take the cushion throw in the air catch step back same leg out to the side as far as you can keep your chest up bring that cushion around your body back in same leg stepping back throwing the cushion up in the air and stepping back to the middle and we repeat so you go forward side and back and then switch legs forward side and back when you go forward you're throwing the cushion when you go sideways you're bringing it around the body when you're stepping back you're also throwing the cushion up in the air make sense yeah <laughs> hopefully i didn't lose any of you okay let's try it so really important here is you're trying to maintain your balance as you're throwing the cushion or wrapping it around your body okay let's try two minutes on the clock three two one and go lunge forward throw the cushion in the air as high as you can step back lunge to the side cushion goes around the body step back same leg lunge backwards throw the cushion in the air step in other leg lunge forward throw the cushion step back lunge to the side pass it around the body step back lunge backwards throw the cushion in the air and step back so feel free to do this in your own time if i'm going too fast don't worry slow it down absolutely fine as long as you're doing the right techniques, so really think about stepping out as far as you can for each of these steps, okay? As far as you can, really challenge your balance in these lunge positions as you're either throwing the cushion or passing it around your body. How are we doing? A quiet chat box is always a good thing. <laughs> Try to think of your body sort of like an elevator. So we don't want to be tipping forward at any point. Imagine your upper body is like an elevator and it can only travel up and down. Well done, everybody. You're almost there. You've got about 20 seconds left. Step out as far as you can each time. Or if you're lunging, try to get that knee toward the floor, but without actually touching the floor. Three, two, one, and rest. Okay, you can put your cushion down. Okay, our next exercise is going to be our movement contrast, which if you've done my exercise videos before, you probably recognize this one. We're gonna start with the feet together. So completely together, if you can, imagine I took a big glue stick and I glued your legs together and your shoes together, okay? So keep them in. What you're gonna do here is you're gonna curl in forward like so, like you're curling into a very small ball. And then from here, you're going to lift your leg up nice and high and step out to the side and be as big as you can. And then you're gonna step back in curl into as small of a ball as you can step out to the other side be as big and open as you can and then come back in so essentially we're going from a very small curled up position to a very big and widespread position okay i think i see a question 
Oh. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. So for the cushion, the pillow from the last exercise, you can use a smaller one or a larger one. That's okay. So the size doesn't matter so much as long as you can comfortably hold on to it in your hand. Okay. Should we try this movement contrast one? Two minutes on the clock. Let's start with the feet together. So just a reminder, we're curling it into a little ball. And then we're stepping out and reaching out as wide as we can. So really step out as far as you can. It's almost like you're about to do the splits, but don't actually do the splits. <laughs> don't want anybody injuring themselves. Don't do the splits. But you're imagining you're stepping out as far as you can and reaching those arms toward the top corners of the room. And then you come back in the middle and then you do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so let's start with the feet together. Are we ready? Three, two, one, and go. Step out as far as you can. Open those fingers and come back in. Same thing, other side. Open the fingers, open the chest, lifting the knees as high as you can in the transition. So I really want to feel the contrast between the big and the small position. If you're doing this exercise and you feel like, well, my big and small movement kind of look the same or they're on the same vertical height, then you need to exaggerate the movements a little bit more. Okay, so you should be uh, physically a lot smaller and a lot shorter when you're crouched down in the middle than when you step out to the side and stand as tall as you can. Good. Well done, everybody. You're almost a minute in. You got five seconds till we're a minute in. Good, well done. One minute left. Try to lift those knees as high as you can during the transition if you can. Step out as far as you can. Try to hold that balance for just a second. And then we're gonna come back in. Well done, everybody. Keep going, keep reaching. Make sure those fingers are wide open. Well done. You've got 30 seconds left. Make sure your arms are open nice and wide, opening the chest, shoulders away from the ears, crouching down nice and low in the middle, and then stepping out as far as you can. Well done, almost there. We got five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Well done, how are we doing? <laughs> okay, our next one, we're going to grab hold of our two towels, or if you are using uh, scarves or some kind of lightweight fabric, that's okay as well. Um, if you only have big towels, like bath towels, not the end of the world, you can use them, but they might be a little bit more tough if they're too big. But let me show you the movement. You're gonna hold onto each towel in your hands like so. And then what we're gonna do here is we're going to step forward with one of your legs. So let's say I'm using this one first. You're gonna step forward and throw the opposite towel forward and catch like this. Let me turn slightly to the side. Let me show you again. So if I'm stepping one leg forward like this, I'm using the opposite hand to throw and catch, and then I'm gonna hold the split leg stance for just a second or two, and then I'm gonna come back in. Now, other side, other leg is gonna step forward. Opposite arm to that leg is going to throw and catch, swinging that arm back when you catch, holding this position for a second or two, holding that balance, and then come back in. Same thing, other side. So you're stepping forward. So I, I'm on an angle so I can show you, but I want you to face forward. So you're stepping forward, opposite arm to that leg is gonna swing up, catch, bring the arm back, hold it for a few seconds, and then step in. Same thing, other side. Step forward, throw, and catch with the opposite side and come back in. Now, there's a few variations for you if that's too difficult. So, level one, if the legs are too hard, I just want you to practice throwing and catching 
like so. Okay, this is the easiest level, but I do want you to try to add in some legs when you can. So do it without legs if you absolutely need to. And then the next level up is you're going to step the legs forward first and then take the opposite arm to that leg to throw and catch. Step back in. Same thing, other side. Step forward first, then the opposite arm to the leg is going to throw and catch and then come back in. The third level is where I ideally would like you to try is you're going to step the leg out and throw and catch at the same time. So opposite arm to leg, throw and catch, keep the arm swinging back when you catch it, hold it for a few seconds, step back in. Same thing, other side. Step forward while you're throwing and catching and hold for a few seconds and then come back in. This one's probably the toughest one. So uh, don't worry if this is feeling pretty hard for you. You can slow it down absolutely fine. Should we try? So three minutes, you have different options. Option one, just the arms, throw in catching. Option two, step forward first, and then opposite arm throws and catches. Or option three, leg and arm goes together in the throw and catch. Okay? I'm gonna turn sideways a little bit so that way you can see me better, but I want you to step forward, okay? I want you to face head on. Okay, two minutes, are we ready? Three, two, one, and go. Make sure you're holding that stance for just a second or two every time you catch that towel or fabric. And you're leaning your body forward slightly with the arms swinging back. Make sure you're stepping out forward as far as you can as well. So we're not just taking a very tiny baby step, but you want the step to be big enough that it actually looks like you're in a split stance position. Well done, everybody. Don't worry if you miss the towel a little bit and you don't catch quite right, that's absolutely fine. Keep trying. This is a balance exercise as well as a bit of a coordination one. Good, well done, how we doing? So remember you have three options. If you don't wanna move your leg forward as you, uh, as you throw and catch the towel, you can do it separately. Step the leg forward first, and then you throw and catch the towel with the opposite hand to leg. Or if it's really impossible for you, don't worry, just do the arms first. And then once you get the hang of it, see if you can add the leg in. But I do want you to try doing some weight shift as well. Although you could argue if you don't use your legs and you just do the throwing and catching with your hands, sometimes you lose your balance as well because your head is moving up and your eyes are moving up. So either way, choose a level that challenges you. Well done, how are we doing? <laughs> well done, everybody. You're a minute in, you got one minute left. So remember, you're leaning your body forward when you're catching. So after you caught the towel, you lean your body forward and you hold it for just a second or two before you move on. So that way you give yourself the opportunity to really hold that balance after you catch that towel. Well done, everybody. You've got about 30 seconds left. You're almost there. Well done. Keep stepping out as far as you can. Really hold that balance after you catch the towel for a second or two before moving on. Because if we're doing it too fast, we're not really gonna get that balance challenge in there. Well done, well done. You've got five, four, three, two, one, and rest. You can put those towels away. Okay, our next one, we're gonna stand with the legs relatively wide. So think 
maybe your shoulder width apart or a tiny bit wider, okay? So I don't want the legs to be under your hips. I want them to be wider than that. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna bend those elbows, stick them into your ribs like so, and make sure your hands are pointing outwards. I don't wanna see them point forward. You wanna open the shoulders so you're reaching your fingertips outward. From here, you're going to squat down. So because your legs are wider, I want to just turn your toes out a little bit. So I don't want your toes facing forward. I want them just a little bit on a corner. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna squat down, stick your bottom back, squat down, and then when you stand up, you're gonna move to one side of your legs like this. So you transfer your weight to one side, reach the arm across the body, and then come back. Squat down, transfer your weight to the other side and reach on a diagonal. And again, squat down, reach on a diagonal. And you'll notice here, my other arm that's not reaching stays in that same position. Squatting down and then coming back up. It stays in this little position. Squatting down and coming back up. Now, when you're doing this movement, it's important that we're not being robotic. I want you to imagine you're very smooth and you never quite stop moving, okay? So imagine you have to continuously move the whole time. You're not stopping anywhere. So it looks like this. We're squatting down and then right away we move up and reach, 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 and right away moving back. So you're not stopping anywhere. It's all very smooth and you never quite finish the movement. So you're reaching as far as you can right away, come back to the squat and go again, okay? So stand with your legs wider because if your legs are too close, what's gonna happen is you're gonna do little squats but you're barely gonna be switching your weight. So can you see here, my weight is still in the middle. Whereas if I bring my legs out and I squat down, I really need to use my legs to then transfer and shift my weight. And that's what we're looking for, is that weight shifting. Okay, are we ready? Two minutes, you can do it. Three, two, one, and go. Squatting down and reaching up as far as you can. Don't stop moving and come back right away. So think smooth moving and you never quite stop moving. As soon as you reach your destination, you're already moving back into that squat. Good, well done. Really use this opportunity to practice shifting your weight from one leg to the other and reaching up as far as you can. Should feel like a bit of a nice stretch as well when you're reaching on the diagonal, or maybe you're concentrating on the movement <laughs> so you're not feeling the stretch. But either way, make sure your legs are not now creeping closer together, right? So just double check yourself for a moment. Make sure as we're doing this movement, our legs aren't starting to creep back in. We wanna try to keep them wide if we can. So that way you gotta really use your leg strength to power yourself over to the corner with each reach. Well done, you've got one minute left. You got one more exercise after this one, and then we're gonna redo the exercises, all five exercises, and then you're done. So you're almost there. Keep squatting down and reaching. Remember, you're never quite stopping. As soon as you reach your destination, you're already moving back to another position. Well done. Are we still breathing? Make sure we're not holding our breath. You're almost there, almost there. 15 seconds. You can do it, almost there. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and rest. Awesome job, everybody, well done. Hopefully you're feeling okay and I haven't scared you off. <laughs> okay, our next exercise, which is our final exercise of this round, uh, we're gonna practice a little bit of a floor touch. So here's what it's gonna look like. I'll show you facing you first, 
and then I'll turn to the side so you can see what's going on. So same arm and leg, same arm and leg moving like so. You're going to swing the arm forward to touch the floor, and then you're going to swing it back to stand up. This is what you're doing with that same leg. You're sliding. So imagine you've got skates on. You're sliding that leg back on the floor as you're swinging the arm forward. Reach the fingertips toward the floor, or if you can't touch the floor, hover off the floor is fine, but go as low as you can. Maybe you're holding onto your opposite knee. That's okay. And then you're going to slide that leg back in, swinging that arm up to return to neutral. So from the side, I'll show you on the other side so you can see. You're taking the leg and the arm, so same side, same arm and leg. You're imagining you got skates on and you're sliding that leg back as you swing your arm forward to touch the floor. And then you're gonna slide that leg back in as you swing the arm back to neutral. Do you see that? Same thing, other side. Sliding that leg back as you swing the arm forward to touch the floor. And then you're gonna slide that leg back in as you swing the arm back to return to neutral. So let me show you again. Slide that leg back, almost like you got skates on. Touch the floor with the same arm. And then you slide that leg back in and you circle the arm back. Same thing, other side. Sliding that foot back, reaching the same arm to touch the floor if you can. If you can't, that's okay. Maybe reach for the opposite shin. And then we're gonna stand back up nice and slow. I think there was a question. Okay, so if you feel like you're falling in this exercise, what I want you to do is, so what you can try is if you have something to hold on to, because essentially what this exercise works on as you're sliding down is that supporting leg. You're really working on those hip muscles to keep you stable. So what you can do is have a wall or a chair or a table or something there beside you that you can maybe put a couple of fingers on. So don't grab hold of it per se. Maybe rest a couple of fingers on. And then you're going to slide the leg down and try to reach as far as you can and stand back up. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side, holding on to something on the other side, reaching down and standing back up. If you don't have anything to hold on to or you don't want to, when you're sliding the leg, don't go as far. So you can see right now, as I'm doing this, my leg is going pretty far. Can you see that? It's going pretty far away from me. So rather than doing that, what you can do is you can slide that leg back just a little bit, bend those knees, reach those fingers down, and stand back up. But the most important thing to keep you balanced is rather than sliding that leg where you're not putting any weight on that leg, you can actually just step it back. So that way you're more stable. You can just step the leg instead of thinking sliding. Because when you think about sliding, you're not putting much weight on that leg. So it's almost like you're only balancing on one leg. So if you need to, step back is okay as well. So either step back, do less of a slide or step, or hold on to something. Hopefully that answers your question. Okay, so we're going to keep alternating one side at a time for two minutes, okay? So I'm gonna stand on a bit of a corner so that way you can see me, but I want you to face head on. Are we ready? <laughs> Three, two, one, and go. So remember with this one, don't feel like you have to do this super fast, okay? So feel free to do this at your own pace. You don't necessarily have to match my pace as long as you're thinking about bringing that leg back as far as you possibly can and swinging those arms as far as you can. So I don't want to see anybody just reach down to the floor, but I really want to see that circle in the arms as you go down and stand back up. Same arm and leg. And of course, if you want a challenge, you can go slower and do the sliding version that I'm showing you here. So sliding that leg back and forward like you're wearing skates, but without actually putting too much weight on that back leg. So essentially you're sort of balancing on that one leg. Well done, everybody. You're almost one minute in. <laughs> Keep breathing through this. Remember, go slower if you need to. 
But really think about stepping or sliding as far as you can. Good, well done. Remember, if you need to hold on to something, that's okay. This is our last exercise before we repeat all five exercises, and then you're done. So you're almost there. <laughs> Good job, everybody. Keep it going. See if you can challenge yourself by going a little bit further each time. Remember, if you can't quite touch the ground, that's okay, don't worry. I don't want you to be falling trying to touch the ground. So do what you can, try to challenge yourself by bringing that leg as, as far back as you can and reaching the arm toward the floor as far as you can. But if you need to hold on to something or if you need to maybe reach for your shin instead of the floor, that's absolutely fine. You've got about 30 seconds left, you're almost there. Make sure you're standing up fully each time as well, right? So I don't want to see anybody just get stuck in the middle like this. <laughs> you want to make sure you stand up nice and tall after each repetition here. So fully extending the hip as you stand back up. And rest. Good. How are we doing? <laughs> We're going to repeat all five exercises from the beginning. So back to exercise one, you're going to need your cushion again, okay? So it doesn't matter what size, as long as you can comfortably hold on to it. So our first exercise was our multi-directional lunges or steps if you can't do lunges. So just to recap, this one, we're lunging or stepping forward, and then you're throwing the cushion up in the air, catching it, step back. Same leg, lunge to the side. Bring that cushion around your torso without tipping forward. So sit, uh, stand up nice and tall. Bring it around your torso. Come back. Then the same leg is going to step backwards. And then you're going to throw that cushion up. Step in. Same thing, other side. Lunge forward. Throw the cushion up in the air. Come back. Lunge to the side. Bring that cushion around your body. Step back, lunge backwards and throw the cushion in the air again and come back. And then we repeat on the other side. Okay, so we remember this one. So let me go sideways so I can show you. Now, just a reminder, if you can't lunge, that's okay. What you can do is you can step instead, okay? So if you can't do a full lunge, just step. But make sure the steps don't look like this. That doesn't count. <laughs> Doesn't count, okay? We gotta step even further, as far as you can. Okay, two minutes, are we ready? Three, two, one, and go. Lunge forward, throw the cushion, step back. Lunge to the side, cushion going around the body, and back to the middle, same leg. Stepping back, throw the cushion in the air, come back to the middle. Other side, lunge forward, throw the cushion. Lunge to the side, pass the cushion around the body, keeping your chest up though. So think about your body like an elevator. We're not gonna tip our chest forward. We can only travel up and down, right? Like an elevator, we're not going forward and backwards. Except for the legs, of course, but I'm talking about the chest. <laughs> well done, everybody. And make sure when you're throwing the cushion, you're actually throwing, and we're not just waving the cushion in the air, but you actually want the cushion to leave your hand and for you to try to catch it again. Who knew you can do exercises with household objects? <laughs> You've got less than a minute left. You're almost there. Well done, everybody. You've got about 40 seconds left. Well done, well done. 30 seconds left. You can do it. This is the last time we're doing this multi-directional lunges today. 
Step a little bit further if you can. Throw a little bit higher if you can. Stand up a little bit taller if you can. Well done, well done. Almost there. You've got five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Okay. You can put the cushion away. <laughs> four more exercises and then we're done. You're almost there. Okay. Next one is our move in contrast. So we're starting with our legs together. Imagine you've glued your legs together and they're completely stuck in like this. You're going to squat down and curl into a small ball like so. And then you're going to step out to the side, lifting the knees as high as you can, stepping out as wide as you can, opening the arms, opening the chest. And then you're going to step back in and then go to the other side, stepping out as far as you can, moving as big as you can, and come back in. So really make sure you see that difference between the small and the big. If your movement is looking like this, where you're kind of the same height the whole time, then we need to do more, right? We want to really exaggerate that height difference as you're doing the big and the small. Okay, two minutes. Are we ready? Three, two, one, and go. Big step as far as you can and coming back. Lifting those knees high if you can, making sure you're opening the palms, spreading those fingers nice and wide as you're stepping out as tall as you can, and then come in and be as short as you can. So really feel that difference between the big and the small position. You want to exaggerate each one. So I don't want to just exaggerate the big, but we also want to exaggerate the small. Yes, well done, everybody. Keep it going. Make sure you're stepping out as far as you possibly can because your legs are not really moving. Then you're not getting the balance challenge. You've got one minute left. You're almost there. You've got three exercises after this, and then you're done. You're almost there. Well done, opening that chest. Make sure when you step out, you balance for a second before you come back in. Yes, well done. Breathing, make sure we're not holding our breath. Good, you've got 30 seconds left. Really feel the difference between the big and the small. Exaggerate the movement. The sillier you feel, the better. <laughs> Almost there. Well done. Well done. You've got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and rest. Woo! Okay. Three exercises left. Our next one is probably your most hated one, <laughs> is the one where we use our towels. So Grab the towels or the scarves or the fabrics, whatever you're using today, one in each hand. So this was the one where we step forward and we're going to throw and catch the towel with the opposite hand to leg, right? And then we hold it for a few seconds and then we step back. And then same thing on the other side, step out, throw and catch with the opposite hand and step back in. Now, a couple of different options again. Option one, if stepping out and throwing is too hard, don't worry. Keep your feet where they are, not wide though, okay? Keep them at least about hip width apart or even more narrow if you can, okay? To challenge your balance. And then you're gonna throw and catch. Throw and catch, just the arms. Level two, step out with the leg first and then take the opposite arm to throw and catch. Step back in, same thing, other side. Step out first and then take the opposite arm to throw and catch. Or if you're feeling brave today, <laughs> you can do the arms and legs together. Stepping out as we're throwing and catching with the opposite arm, hold it for a few seconds and step back in. Okay, great. 
I'm going to turn to the side so you can see me, but I want you to face head on. Okay, are we ready? Three, two, one, and go. Make sure you're holding that lunge for a few seconds before you come back to the middle. And make sure you're actually throwing the towel or fabric and it's actually leaving your hand. We're not just waving it up in the air. <laughs> so feel free to choose your level, whatever works for you today. I know this one's a little bit more challenging balance wise and coordination wise. So don't worry if you don't get it right away. That's absolutely fine. Make sure you hold that balance for a few seconds each time. If you are stepping out with the leg, just check in with yourself every now and then and see if you're still stepping out far enough or if we're starting to kind of step on the spot. Because we really want to make sure we're actually in a lunge position, right? So you want to be in a split stance position. Otherwise, you won't be challenging your balance the way we want to. Good. Well done. A minute is already gone. You've got one minute left. You're almost there. Almost there. After this one, you've only got two exercises left. Then we got our quick cool down, and that's it. So you're almost there. Well done, everybody. You've got about 30 seconds left now. See if you can step further for the last bit. You're almost there. Step further each time. Can you hold that split leg stance for a little bit longer? If you're doing level one or two, do you think you can level up for just the last bit? Last 15 seconds? Try a few. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and rest. Okay, we can put our scarves aside. Right. Two exercises left, and then we're done. So next one, legs nice and wide. We're going to bring those toes out a little bit. So we're not keeping those toes pointing forward. We're going to open them out a little bit just because of how wide we're standing. You're going to stick those elbows into your side, reach those fingertips out to the side like so. So we don't want the fingers facing forward. We want them to the side. From here, we're going to squat down. Sink your bottom down. Keep your chest up if you can. Stand up and reach on a diagonal. Notice how my hands here are open. And then come back down, reach on a diagonal, like so. So with this one, we're really thinking about moving continuously. So I don't want to see anybody do this and hold it. And then do this and hold it. So we want to think about us being continuously moving. You never quite stop. As soon as you reach one destination, you're already moving in the other direction. Okay? Are we ready? Two minutes. Keep those legs nice and wide if you can. Three, two, one, and go. And with this one, you also want to think about the extreme of the movement. How low can you sink that bottom down? And how far can you reach? Really think about transferring your weight from side to side as you're doing this. So nobody should be keeping equal weight on their feet the whole time, right? So you squat down and then you're standing up on one of those legs. So you're not in the middle the whole time. How far can you reach? Are your fingertips open? <laughs> so I think a lot of the times you want to keep your hand closed. So... Try to open the hand nice and wide. Wiggle those fingers if you have to in order to remind yourself. Well done, everybody. Well done, well done. Almost there. We've got one exercise left after this. And then we're done. You're almost there. One minute left. Keep moving. Remember, you're trying to move continuously, almost like you're never quite stopping. As soon as you reach one of your positions, you're already starting to move in the other direction. Fingers open. Very nice. Well done, everybody. You're almost there. 
Almost there. You got about 30 seconds left. Well done. Well done. Sink that bottom down nice and low if you can in that middle. Almost there. I know this one's challenging. Doing really good. You've got about 15 seconds left. No, 10. Sorry, I lied. 10 seconds. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Okay, how are we doing? One more, one more, and then we're done. You're almost there. Okay, this last one is the one where we're touching the floor. So let me turn on an angle so you can see me. So this is the one where you move the same arm and leg, and you're imagining the leg is sliding back like you're wearing skates. You're sliding that leg back while the same arm circles forward to touch the floor, and then you're sliding that leg back as you're swinging the arm back. And then same thing, other side, slide the leg back while the arm circles forward to touch the floor if you can, and then slide back. So remember, if you feel like you need to hold on to something, that's fine, hold on, and then slide that leg back, okay? And you don't necessarily have to touch the floor if you can't do that, that's okay. Just go down as far as you can, and if the sliding is really throwing you off balance, you can step. Stepping back is okay as well. Okay, two minutes, and then we have our cool down, and that's it. You're almost there. Only got a few minutes left. Okay, two minutes on the clock. Three, two, one, and go. So remember this one, the slower you do, the, the better, actually, because you want to really stay balanced on that leg, and you want to really control the movement. It shouldn't feel like you're falling forward into a sort of an uncontrolled position. You want to really take the movement slow and balance on that supporting leg. Making sure you're bending the knee on the supporting leg. Hold on to something if you need, or don't reach for the floor if you can't. That's absolutely fine. Just go as far as you can. Yes, very good. Well done. Make sure you keep breathing. We're not holding our breath. I know you're probably tired by now, but you're almost there. Almost there. You got one more minute of hard work here, and then we're doing our cool down, and that's it. You're almost there. How far can you reach? How far can you slide that leg for the last little bit? Well done, well done. You've got about 30 seconds left. Can you take the movement a little bit bigger, a little bit lower? Yes, well done, keep going. Almost there, almost there. Make sure we're breathing, not holding our breath. Well done. Last 15 seconds, almost there. We got 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Bring your legs into a hip width apart stance, and we're just going to bend those knees, bring those arms down, reaching up overhead, open those arms nice and soft. And open, and again, bending those knees, sweep those arms, open the arms. And we're going to interlace the fingers, and we're going to reach the arms up if you can. Let me move back. Arms up, and then you're going to go on a bit of a diagonal here, reaching your interlaced finger on a diagonal. And then bring it back to the middle, same thing, other side. Keeping those interlaced fingers, reaching on a diagonal, and coming back, relax the arms. Step those legs out nice and wide. You're gonna reach your fingertips to one of your knees, bend toward that leg, keep the other leg straight. You should feel a inner thigh stretch on that straightened leg. If you don't feel it, bring that leg out further. So step out further, 
holding it here. And then we're gonna move to the other side, same thing, bending that knee, reach the fingertips to the other knee. You should feel a stretch on the inside of that inner thigh of the straight leg. And coming back to the middle. We're gonna find a wall, you can hold onto the wall. We're gonna step one of your legs back like so, so that your front leg is nice and bent and your back leg is straight. Tuck that bottom under and you're really sinking your weight forward into that bent leg. And you're trying to reach that back heel down to the floor, keeping that knee straight. You should feel a stretch in your calf. If you don't, step out further. Holding it here for five, four, three, two, one, and stepping back up. Other leg, stepping back, reach that back heel towards the floor as you bend your front knee. If you don't feel a stretch, step back further. Holding it here for five, four, three, two, one, and relax. We're gonna use a, a chair for our next one. You're going to stand, you can hold on to something. You're going to bend your leg and put it up on the chair behind you, keeping those knees together. Don't let the knee come forward. Don't let it go too far back, but keeping those knees together. Push the hips forward and you should feel a stretch on the front of your thigh and that hip. If you don't feel the stretch and you're pretty flexible, you can reach for your ankle and pull it up towards your bottom, same thing, or you can use that chair, holding it here for five. Four, three, two, one, and bring that leg down. Same thing, other side. Bend that leg back onto a chair. Keep those knees together if you can. Push the hips forward to feel the stretch. Again, if you would like, you can hold onto the foot and pull it to your bottom. Or you can use the chair, holding it here for five, four, three, two, one and relax and you are done thank you everybody for joining us i hope you're all feeling okay how we doing how we feeling um oh uh oh no those are the same questions in the chat box i thought we had something new but nope those are the same questions well Thank you everybody for joining us. I know it's a little bit challenging some of the exercise we did today. So don't worry if they're feeling really hard because they are meant to challenge you. So I hope you keep practicing. And um, remember the recording will be online on our YouTube channel this time next week. Um, or if you have any questions, you can feel free to email me at info at parkingsin.bc.ca and I will do my best to answer the questions. Um, and I hope I will see you next week. Thanks, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful end of your week. And I hope I didn't scare anybody off if you're new. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Bye.